the transfiguration of Jesus was one of the most incredible events in the Word of God. It was the glorification of the human body of Jesus. His body underwent a change in form. The event took place after Jesus revealed who he truly was. Jesus took his disciples to Caesarea Philippi, a city about 25 miles north of the Sea of Galilee, where there was a temple honoring the Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus. It was here that Jesus said to his followers, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? Matthew chapter 16 verses 13 to 15. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Apparently, there is a lot of conjecture concerning Jesus among the spectators. Some, like Herod Antipas, believed he was the resurrected John the Baptist or one of the Old Testament prophets. But after his disciples relayed all the gossip concerning Jesus, he got to his real question, who do you say that I am? The you here is plural, so the question was addressed to the entire group. Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Matthew chapter 16, verses 16 to 18. Simon Peter responded quickly and correctly, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus affirmed this great confession of faith by praising God the Father for revealing this truth to Peter and blessing him. That opened the door for an announcement from Jesus. Something so amazing that even hell couldn't stop it was on its way. The church. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. After confirming his identity to his disciples, Jesus described his mission. He told them that he had to go to Jerusalem, suffer at the hands of religious leaders, be slain, and be risen the third day. In other terms, Jesus summarized the foundation for the gospel. The Transfiguration After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as a light. Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 and 2. After discussing his identity, mission, and the cost of discipleship with his disciples, Jesus led Peter, James, and his brother John up a high mountain. He was supernaturally transfigured at the time. The magnificence of the coming king and his realm was shown to these three Jewish fishermen. Now that the disciples have understood who Jesus is, the next incident follows on quite naturally. Jesus leads Peter, James, and John to the summit of the mountain, above the snow line, where he is transfigured in front of them. In describing the event, Peter says that Jesus' clothes became brighter than any bleaching agent on earth can make them. He actually uses the word detergent, or fuller, which was the equivalent in those days. The light was shining through Jesus' clothes from the inside, and they saw his glory. He met with Moses and Elijah to discuss his exodus, whereby he would accomplish a release for his people, as Luke records. The fundamental point of the Gospel, then, is the disciples' realization of who Jesus is. He is the Christ.
the Messiah. This is also an important point for the readers. This is the good news that Mark is conveying through the form of his gospel. It is taken up by Matthew and Luke who expand on it. His face and garments became luminous like the sun and blazing light, a visual representation of his deity. Just as the glory cloud or Shekinah represented God's presence in the Old Testament, the sight foreshadowed what the Lord Jesus will be like when he returns to establish his kingdom. He will no longer be known as the sacrificial lamb, but as the Lion of Judah. Everyone who sees him will recognize him as God the Son, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. As if that weren't enough, two prominent Old Testament characters, Moses and Elijah arrived and conversed with Jesus. This scene shows that persons who have died, such as Moses, have cognitive understanding and the ability to communicate. Together, they symbolize all those who make up God's kingdom, those who will be raptured and not see death, like Elijah, and those who will die and go to be with the Lord, like Moses. In addition, Moses represented the law, while Elijah represented the prophets. They represented the entire Old Testament when combined. They, together with the disciples, represent both the Old and New Testaments as they revolve around Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my Son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. Matthew chapter 17, verses 4 to 6. Peter, who was always fast with the phrase when no one else could, remarked, Lord, it's wonderful for us to be here. He proposed building three shelters, one for each of them. While he was still speaking, a dazzling cloud appeared and a voice said, this is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. God the Father interrupted Peter to validate his one and only son, the King of Kings, both verbally and visually. What were the disciples' reactions? They were afraid and fell face down. They had the foresight to take the holy and all-powerful God of heaven and earth seriously. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. Matthew chapter 17, verses 7 and 8. When Jesus touched them and encouraged them not to be scared, the three disciples looked around and saw just Jesus. Why? Because Jesus isn't merely one among many faithful servants of God. He is superior to them all. The ministries of Moses and Elijah ultimately pointed toward Christ.